video we'll discuss SharePoint content approval flow and we'll see what connection it will take when we add a content approval inside the flow. So there is a action name called start and wait for approval. So if we use that, uh, we can uh, we can able to send an approval email to the assigned user and also we can take an input from the email body directly like it is an approval or rejected and also uh, we can able to send a reminder approvals also to the end user so for that first term i am going back to this uh, con contract management list so we have couple of fields here so when user enters the data in it and uh, it um, the approval status would be in pending status because and in this list i enable this content approval concept so once we add and this status will be in pending state so instead of approving from this sharepoint list we can able to send an email from power automate and the end user can able to approve from there for example if you want to have multi-level approval also you can able to set it out set it up that from the power automated that we'll discuss to create a flow um, I already opened this make.powerautomate.com and this would be an automated flow because when a new item creates in the contract management it has to send an email or it has to send an approval email to the end user. So for that I am clicking this automated cloud flow. I am giving a name as contract approval. Um, I'll take a trigger as when an item created. So this is a trigger point I am taking. When you click create it will create a flow and it will add this trigger action inside this trigger action if you click this one and it will show all the sites which are available in this tenant now i'm selecting this rishan solutions dot and uh, the list name is contract management select this one if you go to advanced option you only see another option called limit columns by view now i i don't want to do it for any specific view now here we have new step option when you click this one we can able to search for the approval connection here when you type approval you can able to see approval so here we we have four different type of uh, actions are available but in this video we only covers then this start and wait for approval click this one now it, it is asking approval type we have total four different type of approvals one is approval reject so here which one is everyone must approve the next one is first to respond for example if you are assigning this to multiple users and if you want to take input from all the users you can choose this one and if you want to take anyone who first respond to that approval email you want to take that response you can use this one so these two also same but here we have approval reject here we have a custom response custom response means if i take this custom response here i'll see a couple of options here here i can able to take a response like uh, you know first i can put something like reject and then i can put um, um, review and uh, i can able to add something called approve or something like this so you can add a custom buttons in the email uh, for example if you use this one and other options are like title assigned to details which are common in both the places and if i use this out of the box approval reject and this time you will not have that custom responses options uh, we have title we have assigned to if you go to advanced option uh, we have couple of like you know requester so who is the requester if we are not adding any user it will take the user who created this flow uh, and coming back to the notifications if you want to send this as a notification to e uh, email and uh, it you can able to see which uh, enables email push and team notifications if you make it no and it will not send anything and if you enable reassignment you can able to reassign this approval to other people next we have attachment name and uh, so here now we have attachment name and content for the single and if you want to add more attachments you can able to add more attachments but anyhow i'm not going to add any attachments now and here the title is a mandatory field I'm just entering contract approval for I'll take a dynamic content as title and assigned to 
I'll take this one. We already have a assigned to field. I'm taking this assigned to email. Uh, of course, you can able to hard code here as well. You can able to use the email address here. Now details I'm not provi providing. I'm not providing the item link and description. So if you provide the link and that also goes in the email. So there you can able to see the link. So if you go to this eclipses, you have settings here. When you click this settings, we have couple of options. The first and second option is secure inputs and secure outputs. If I enable this one and the inputs and the outputs will not appear, will not appear in the history of this flow. So this is morely into a security purpose. For example, if you have any uh, you know, confidential data in your input or confidential data in the outputs, you don't want to show to the end users or you don't want to show to the people who have an access to this flow. If they check the history of the flow and you want to hide the inputs or you want to hide the outputs, you can able to do this one. So we'll, we'll test this one once it runs. Now, if you go to the timed out concept, now when you this timed out, which means the default pass duration of the flow is 30 days. So you want to keep the default one, you can, you know, let this one or uh, you want to add two days, three days, five days, depends upon your business requirement. You want to put the timed out, you can able to put, but that should be in a format. Now he, here it states that period one day. So P1D stands for period one day. So this is a kind of format. So if you want to, you know, time out this one in hours also, you can able to put P1H. Uh, that is a format. Uh, once you give, for example, if I want to pass this one for 12 days or 13 days, I can give like this P12D. So which means it the period of 12 days I'm giving. So here retry policy, here the statement you can see, a retry policy applies to the intermittent failures. If it failed, uh, with any of the reason if if you want to retry it you can able to retry so this message you can able to read so the retry policy here we have couple like default and you don't want to retry it you can go with a none and here you have exponential interval and fixed interval so if you go to the exponential interval so the count how many times you want to retry so the count will you know 1 to 90 is the maximum so you can put 10 15 something like that the interval here the the time period it is showing is 20 seconds example they have given and uh, the minimal interval which is 10 seconds and here the interval which is showing one hour so whatever you want to you know put for the retry policy you can able to set it out and this one will discuss in the upcoming upcoming videos how we can do that and we'll do some test and i'll show how this retry policy will work and uh, so this track tracked properties also will discuss in the next video i'm clicking done so we covered the secured inputs and then timed out concept i'm clicking done and um, now the retry policy we can put something default so we will not get an error so i'm going to this so we have filled this approval type and title and assigned to we are done with this one we'll go back here and we'll add one more step here so which is a condition i'm adding so for example if it is approved or if it is rejected i want to do some other actions so for that for that when i click here i can able to see the dynamic content which is related to start and wait for approval so there is uh, uh, there is a property called outcome and i click this one here it is equal to and uh, i'll do like when it is approved i want to update in the list so for that there is an action name called set content approval status that i'm clicking this add action i'll search for that set content approval status set content approval status click on it now again it is asking for the site address so we are working on this Russian solutions select this Russian solutions and the list of library name is contract management ID I'll take from the trigger which is when an item is created and then action is approved and if you want to add the comments you can able to add the comments as well the comments will take from the dynamic content so which is response comments okay so if, if, if you have multiple comments it will you know go into the loop or if you if you don't want this one you can you know come out of it 
you you just need to remove the comments from there it will not come outside but if you if you remove this one so now it is fine and um, you can able to come out of this now you can remove so if we have multiple responses so then it will go into a loop now I'll, what i'll do is i'll copy to my clipboard and this side i'll add from the clipboard now we have this and we have this and this side i'll change this action to reject now we have this side for approve and this side for reject now we are done with the flow so to test this one i'm saving it now this is saved we'll go back to the list we'll create a new item now here i'm just giving that device contract is a title and uh, the vendor is xyz company and the vendor id i'm just giving one two three and the cost is one lakh twenty thousand dollars and then start date will put 21st of august now when i click save now which is saved now whenever you add the data into a, any list which have a content approval now you can able to see the pending one but we missed out something see assign to is empty our flow will fail so to overcome that i'll create a new one with the same name like device contract and the vendor id again i'm giving xyz company and vendor id 123 and then cost which is five lakh dollars and then the start date again i'm putting this and i'm assigning this to support account so now we have given when i click this save now again we have created another entry in the list so in this one we have given complete information now we also added the assign to now we are expecting from that flow and this user will get an email with that approval reject buttons from the approval connection so once it is once it is uh, once the flow is runs and it will get the email so now you can able to see which is in pending state if you go back to the flow and i'll go back to the history of this flow now just before which is failed because you now we have not provided any information or we have we are not provided any assigned to so that's why this is failed because the assigned to is empty now if you go back to this one now here you can able to see that this flow is started running and now this one is done the trigger action when an item is created so we have created an item uh, now this is successful when you go to the second one now the start and wait for approval is started so that's why you can able to see this orange mark so this orange mark states that this action is in running state now once it is in running state it will send an approval email to the support account and then once we approve or reject if we do anything from there and this action will successful and it will go to the condition there there it will check the outcome and if the outcome is approved then it will go to a site and if the outcome is not approved or if, if it is rejected then it will go to the no side so both sides we have given content approval status if it is approved the content approval status will change to approve if it is reject this will change to reject and we'll wait for a while to get the email so this will take a couple of uh, minutes maybe one or two minutes it will take and then it will send an email to the support account once uh, end user gets the email and there we will have the complete information related to this contract and then we can able to uh, approve or reject from there
okay we are not received any email yet it might take a couple of minutes and also if we go to this previous failed email inside this one if i go to the mail which is in failed state if you click this one now this is in failed state so if you go to the start and wait for an approval now here the request failed you can able to see the error code which is invalid approval create request assigned to missing so here also we can able to see the error details there is an error in your flow preventing the creation of approval use the link below to learn about this one so it is giving a very static information but here it is giving a complete information which is assigned to is missed so that's why this is failed now we got an email if you if you go back to if you if you go back to here so here we got an email so this email stating that contract approval for device contract now who is requested you can able to see and the date which is created now we have approval result if i go to approve when i click this one it shows another box to enter the comments now i'm entering the comments as this is approved and when we click submit now this is in working working state now it will approve now you can able to see the outcome here it is approved now i'm going back to this one now this is still in pending state if once we click refresh now we can able to see this is approved the content approval of this particular item is approved that we did from the email body now again i'm going back to the flow so this flow is successful if i click this one here we have this action start and wait for approval when you click this one you can able to see a message in red color content not shown due to security configuration so this is we did uh, like secure inputs and secure outputs even though here it here it is an output even we cannot able to see the inputs of this one and i go to the condition also the outcome also not showing here content not shown due to the security configuration that we did in the settings of start and wait for approval now if you go to this now this is true so that's why this action is executed now we have given the action as approved so that's why it is approved so this way we can able to create a simple content